YouTube, what is going on? I hope everyone is doing well. So I have been uploading frequently lately. I hope you're enjoying it and I will try to continue doing that. So obviously if you haven't subscribed, smash the subscribe button, join the crew, ding the notification ball, ball? bell, leave a like, all that good stuff. So in today's video, we are obviously going to be putting together another awesome PC build. I will take you through all the steps, show you the benchmarks, all that good stuff. And for once, we are building an all black PC. It does have RGB components, but we will only be using them for a single light. So definitely pretty cool. So with that said, let's get into this. Okay, so first up we have the Ryzen 7 3700X. You know the drill, eight cores, 16 threads, great CPU, and what's more, if you do not mind buying this used, you can definitely pick up a bargain at the minute over on eBay, etc. So keeping our CPU cool is the brand new Corsair H100i Elite Capilux. This cooler will get the job done, especially when it comes to overclocking, and obviously it's going to look good doing it. So the motherboard supporting our Ryzen 7 is the MSI X570 Meg Ace. This motherboard is definitely not the cheapest option, but it packs all the features I am looking for and will allow us great overclocking headroom, so definitely worth it. If you don't want to spend that much, there are plenty other boards that you can pick up a lot cheaper and save yourself some money. For the RAM, we have 16GB of XPG Spetrix D50, clocked at 3200MHz and it will certainly get the job done. So keeping with XPG, I have also opted to use their 1TB Spectrix S40G NVMe. This is the only drive that I will be putting in this PC, but don't forget you can go ahead and simply add an SSD or a mechanical drive if you want to have more storage on board. So next up, our case of choice is the new Corsair 4000D Airflow in black. I think for the price, this case is absolutely fantastic. It offers plenty of room to build in and some customization options like the ability to mount your GPU vertically if you're into that kind of thing. And also you can remove things like the drive cages and that. So it's definitely worth looking at for the price. So last up, powering our games to the max is the MSI RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio. This card is a monster and remains pretty quiet while it smashes games. I'm well aware that getting a hold of an RTX 3080 is a bit of a pain in the butt at the minute, but it's what I have for this build. So hopefully you can see what's needed and prepare for hopefully picking one of these up in the very, very near future if all the manufacturers manage to get this sorted. One other side note, I will be using Corsair LL120 fans in this build. I love how they look and they will definitely get the job done while hardly making any sound. They are great fans and I really love that they can spin pretty high without creating crazy noise. Okay, so let's get into building this. As always, we start by preparing the motherboard. So take your CPU and remember to hold it by the edges as you definitely do not want to be bending those pins. Open the CPU slot up by lifting this lever all the way. Take note of the gold triangle on the CPU as this matches up with the marking on the motherboard. Then simply set it down into place. No force is needed, it should just fall in there. That's pretty much it. Close the slot back over and you're good to go. Next, go ahead and grab your RAM. Make note of the cutout as this matches up to the notch on the slot itself. From there, open up your two dim slots. We are using these two as instructed by the motherboard manual. Then simply push them down into place and they should give a nice satisfying click when seated properly. Now we are going to go ahead and install our NVMe drive. So you do have three slots to choose from on this motherboard, but as this does feature RGB, I'm going to put it in the bottom slot so we can see it. So all we have to do to remove the cover is take the screw out and it simply just pulls off. Then take note of the cutout on the drive and the notch on the motherboard, then simply go ahead and push it into place. From there, take the small screw from the motherboard box and secure it down. So now that the motherboard is ready, we can move on to the case itself. So let's go ahead and install our fans. First off, just remove the included fan from the front and go ahead and mount the three LL fans as you can see. One thing I will say is just make sure you have the cables facing the rear of the case just to make cable management nice and easy. Once you have installed the three on the front, simply do the exact same for the rear fan. 
The next step is to remove the box of accessories from the hard drive cage, as you can see. I will also be removing this cage as well, just to give me more space for cable management. So if you want to do this, remove the two thumb screws and pull it towards you and you are sorted. Now that we have that down, we can lower the motherboard into the case. Just line it up with the cutout and it should sit nice. And from there, simply secure it down with these screws that came with the case. And there is eight in total, and it's always advisable to do this in a crisscross pattern. So just start in one corner, move to the next until you have all the screws in. So now it's time to go ahead and connect some case cables up. First off, grab the USB-C cable and plug it into the port located here. It just pushes in nice and simple. Next, take the USB-3 cable and take note of the notch. This board has two USB-3 ports, so just pick whichever one suits you and push it into place. Now grab the HD audio cable and this plugs into the bottom left of the motherboard as you can see here. And last up we have the front panel I.O. cables. If you go ahead and grab the motherboard manual there is a nice picture showing you the layout. So go ahead and install them in the port located here and you should have something that looks like this. So now I will be installing the power supply. It simply pushes in from the back of the case as you can see. Then you secure it in place using the screws that are included with the power supply itself. Now that we have that in, we can go ahead and connect up some more cables. So grab the cable labelled CPU and plug it into the CPU port on the motherboard. You will find this in the top left. And if you plan to overclock heavily, then I suggest probably using both of these ports if your power supply does of course allow for this. Now go ahead and grab the 24 pin motherboard cable. And as you can see, as always, I will be using these awesome braided cable extensions from ModTech. I will leave their Instagram linked down below just in case you guys want to go ahead and check them out. They have loads of different configurations, so getting some colour, mixes, etc. for your build will not be an issue. So definitely go ahead and check them out. So the 24 pin cable just plugs into the motherboard as seen here. Just make sure it is seated properly. It does need a little bit of force. Now that we have that done, we can prepare our CPU cooler. As I'm using the LL fans, I won't be using the ones included in the box, but setup is exactly the same. So if you are mounting this up top like me, go ahead and grab your fans and mount them to the radiator using these long screws. Just make sure you mount them with the wires facing the rear of the case. Now we have to remove the Intel bracket as it is pre-applied. So go ahead and pull it out and grab all your AM4 goodies. So the AM4 bracket just slides into place the same way you remove the Intel one. Then you can take your thumb screws and AMD clips and simply attach them loosely to the bracket like so. Just make sure not to over tighten them yet as you will need a little bit of wiggle room when you are installing it on top of the CPU. From there go ahead and remove the magnetic mesh from the top of the case. And the next step I would do is take the fan connector that you see here and plug it into the CPU header at the top of the motherboard as this is pretty hard to do when the radiator is installed. Now you can simply go ahead, secure the radiator to the top of the case using these screws and washers. So as always, just take note that the cooler does have pre-applied thermal paste, so no need to worry here. And from there, all we do is place the pump head over the CPU and secure it down by attaching the AMD clips to the black brackets on the motherboard, as you can see. Just make sure you definitely do not over tighten this. Give the top a little twist, the bottom a little twist. Just make sure it's nice and snug. Definitely do not over tighten. Now go ahead and grab the Commander Pro from the H100 iBox and connect all of your fans up and you should have something that looks like this. Obviously we are connecting the fans to one side and the RGB connections to the other. Now take the USB from the Commander Core and plug it into a USB port on the motherboard. There are two clearly labelled at the bottom. Now grab the SATA cable and connect it to the power supply. And last of all, take this cable that comes from the pump head and connect it to the bottom of the commander core. Now it's time to go ahead and install the bad boy. So remove these two PCIe brackets on the case, open up the PCIe slot by pushing down on it, then simply slide the graphics card in place and it should give a nice satisfying click. From there, use the two screws that you removed to secure the graphics card. So now to power this bad boy, you need to grab three 8-pin PCIe cables from your power supply and plug them in. Now all you have to do is go ahead, clean everything up, plug it into the power supply, 
smash the power button and you should be greeted with loads of RGB. So once that's done, it will boot into the BIOS and from there you can go ahead and install Windows and all the drivers for your motherboard, graphics card and all that good stuff. I will of course leave a nice video linked down below. You can go ahead and follow that on. So that's pretty much the build done. From there, I guess it's time to go ahead and see the benchmarks. So as you can see, this pretty much is a gaming monster, especially at 4K. I'm definitely happy with how this build turned out and I'm more happy that I finally <laughs> built something that's not white and full of RGB. I'm definitely digging the black case, all the black components and just having a single white blue LED light on. I definitely think it looks good. Let me know down below what you are thinking about the looks and obviously the benchmarks. So, if you have any questions about the build, as always, let me know. You can even join the Discord, link down below. There are plenty of people in there that will help you go ahead and put your PC together. As always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe, be kind to each other, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.